the people and welcome to another facebook live with me john proudfoot i am about to explain to you how the green list of banting works and before i go into detail about the green list and how to use it i'm going to give you a brief background of of how the lists were created so if you've seen the red list and the orange list and the overview then uh, you can skip past this part but it's vitally important you understand so the 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 banting food lists were designed to enable you to follow a banting diet or a ketogenic diet or keto diet or low carb diet and keep yourself under 50 grams of carbs a day very easily and without meal tracking so that's the key and how we did that is, is we used seven principles because we want you to be really healthy and i'll do another live at a later stage on what real health means to us but basically there are seven principles to the banting and keto diet the first four are ingredient related so it's low carb it's sugar free it's gluten free and it's free of seed oils okay and the next three are level of processing so how processed is this food and is it real how healthy is it so we've we've got this category called sneakiness so is the ingredient going to damage your health in some way and is it practical to put this ingredient on a certain list and um i say this all the time but you know dried herbs or garlic they're high in carbohydrates but we use a very small amount of them so we put them on the green list other foods like sugar-free soft drinks are low in carbohydrates but they have other health implications so we put them on the red list so there's this layer of practicality um, or sense checking when we put the list together so if you do want to down the list download the lists they they look like this and um if you go up uh, you will get an A4 version in the download. You can click on this post or underneath in YouTube or up above in, in Facebook. And in that pack, you will get a, a an A4 download um, and you will get um, two A4s. So it's, it's much bigger and you can stick it on your fridge and go through it. So I'm going to go through the, the green list here and explain sort of how to approach the green list. So what you'll see um, when you look at this is that the red list is foods that you should not eat okay you should not eat the the foods on the red list especially if you are trying to lose weight and the orange list these are foods that you need to use, that you need to exercise control over so limit your intake have like one allocation of, of 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 two categories per day so it says only two of any of the below allocations but when it comes to the green list um, the rules changed slightly over the years since the book came out in 2013 and it used to be, I think, the first version of the Real Meal Revolution, it said, all you can eat. And then people stuck stuff their faces like, oh, my gosh, I need to eat as much as humanly possible of these foods. And it's actually eat your fill. So one of the, the, the reasons we do banting or keto is to reset the appetite. So as, as humans with this diet and all of this, these adverts, we've got things messing with our appetites all the time. And so eat to hunger is like an art in itself because we want you to learn how to use your appetite again to actually tell you the truth and so eat to hunger means like while you're eating you know try and think about whether or not you're full or, or if the hunger that you're feeling is a craving rather than actual hunger and and so how the green list was designed the green list is obviously like the purest foods that we could think of. So these are foods that have no seed oils, no sugar, the carbs are super low, usually under five grams per hundred grams. The level of processing is low. The health implications of these foods is very low or beneficial. Um, and they're very practical to have, have on the list. And so under fruits and vegetables, you will see these are mostly green vegetables. They are mostly vegetables that grow above the ground. They are all vegetables that are low in carbohydrates. Um, and most of them are high in fiber. And you'll see where there's a P next to an ingredient, that actually means that it is, it is a prebiotic food, which means the fiber in this food is going to impregnate your gut bacteria. It's not impregnate, it is going to feed your gut bacteria. Okay. Uh, then further down the list, we get um, condiments. Now, obviously, most condiments out there, chutney, ketchup, um, HP sauce, uh, a lot of hot pepper sauces, they've all got sugar and all kinds of stuff in them. So our condiments, we've said basically any condiments fine as long as it's got no sugar or gluten or seed oils or preservatives in it, uh, which leaves you with basically like balsamic vinegar and olive oil. And then tamari soy. And the reason we say tamari soy is because tamari soy is naturally fermented. 
So a lot of the badness has been fermented out of the soy already. Um, and it's, and there's no gluten in, in tamari soy. And tamari has got a sort of umami about it. So it does make whatever you put it on more delicious. Then, then higher up on the list, we've got drinks. Now, the reason these drinks are on the list, I mean, humans are designed to drink water. So let's just remember that. Um, a lot of people say, well, what can I drink? And uh, when they start, and we say, well, you know, you drink what, what human beings are designed to drink, which is water. So, so drink still or sparkling, preferably not out of a bottle. Uh, depending on your municipality, tap water in most places is, is pretty decent, um, especially in South Africa. And so, and then flavored waters. So flavored waters is like a glass of water with sliced fruit. Obviously, don't eat the fruit. And if you do eat the fruit, that counts as part of your, your veg allocation for the day or your fruit allocation. And then caffeine-free herbal teas. So we discussed caffeinated tea earlier in an orange list talk. And caffeine just has an impact on people's sleep and stress levels that, that sometimes impacts their, their weight loss. So we want you, when you drink, to just drink anything that is that is as close as possible to to unadulterated water because that's really what your your body needs okay under drinks water is pretty much what we're saying you should drink then then fertilizers fertilizers are foods that that fertilize the gut so your gut is like a garden and you want to have amazing bacteria just like you want to have amazing soil in in a garden you want to have the soil with lots of organic matter in it, um, you know, almost the bacteria in the soil producing their own micronutrients that produce amazing um, nutrients for these plants to absorb and produce fruit. And it's exactly the same in your gut bacteria. You want a, a rich gut biome that just produces all the micronutrients you need and, and gives your body amazing um, benefits, smooth skin, you know, bright, clear eyes helps with the brain. So, so we really want you to have um, a high volume of good bacteria in the gut and you can uh, look after your gut in, in, I mean, I suppose the three things you want to do to look after your gut are take away everything that is bad for your gut biome. So take away like gluten and sugar and, and anything that is going to be inflammatory and damage the balance of your gut, gut bacteria. You want to put foods in that are actually going to increase the volume of gut bacteria. And then the third thing you want to do is add food to your gut that feeds the gut bacteria. So the pea, all the foods with peas are going to feed the gut bacteria. If you remove all the foods from the red list, you're going to stop damaging your gut. And then if you add in like a fertilizer every day, some sauerkraut, some bone broth, um, you know, certain yogurts and fermented dairies, you're going to be impregnating your gut with good bacteria. So we put fertilizer on the green list. Um, except for water kefir and kombucha because they're slightly higher in sugar and you want to um, go slow on those, especially if you're trying to, to lose weight. And then um, fats in banting and keto, and this, I don't want anyone to get confused by this. So, so I want to be crystal clear because there's a, every time I speak to a dietitian about banting, they say, no, we don't like it. There's too much fat. We are not saying you need to drink fat and drink cups of butter. We are saying that that previously saturated fats were villainized and it's not now healthy to eat as much fat as you can, but it is more unhealthy to eat lots of, of seed oils than it is to eat saturated fat. Saturated fat can be enjoyed the same way you might have enjoyed other fats in the past. So not like drinking it like butter because that's not going to help you lose any weight. But these are fats that you do not need to be afraid of. The other critical thing about fat, which which is um, it's incorrectly taught in a lot of keto programs is that when you are in fat burning mode and you have a lot of body fat, your body is going to burn the, the fat that you eat before it burns the fat that's in your body. Remember the fat that's in your body is reserve. And so if you're adding in lots of fat to your diet, when you are in your weight loss phase, you are going to slow down your weight loss. So your body can only access a certain amount of your, your body's fat stores per day. And so that's why we talk about your ideal keto ratio, because your keto ratio is going to tell you how much extra fat you need to add in after your body has burnt 
the, the the fat that it can burn through in a day. So it's really important to know that you're not just like pouring loads of fat over everything. Fat is is a flavoring and fat is there for satiety if you're starving or craving, but it's not to be over consumed by any means. And then finally, protein. So um, basically any animal protein, uh, good quality eggs. And then when it comes to naturally cured meats, what we mean by that is that some meats look like they're cured meats, but they're actually processed and they have chemicals added to them to sterilize them. They've got grains added to them and fillers to bulk up the volume. We want you to eat unadulterated meat products. So this is well-raised animals, preferably organic or grass-fed or regenerative, but that depends on your budget and your lifestyle and if that can work for you. Um, but you want to stay away from like chemically cured meat. So when we say salami, pancetta, bacon, we're talking about like well-made bacon, well-made pancetta, etc. Offal, highly recommend offal. Uh, a lot of offal is much more nutrient dense than even some fruits and vegetables. Um, and, and then all seafood, cheeses and, and eggs. And that's all uh, within reason. We're not saying stuff your face with the stuff, but this is of the protein that you do have you should have some protein. But what I want to draw your attention to is that the Banting diet contains fermented foods, real fats, it contains water, it contains a whole bunch of different green vegetables and, and, and very little condiments. And so I don't want anyone to get the idea that Banting is like this high protein meat fest diet. We want you to eat a lot of green vegetables. We want you to impregnate your gut with healthy, healthy bacteria. And we just want you to eat real undamaged fats and good old fashioned protein. And so that is the core of the Banting diet. If you eat these foods, you will get healthy. You do not need any fancy products. You don't need any like extra super special expensive flowers. You just need to eat real fruits. I mean, real vegetables and meats and your health will improve dramatically. So that's my intro to the green list. I hope you found that useful. Please, if you like this, share it with friends and family who perhaps don't necessarily understand what Banting is about because uh, it's important that this message gets out there. So thanks again. For